Hey guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKham.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, another one in the Learn to Sew series, we are gonna make an apron. This is super cute and adorable. First link down below has all of the details, written instructions. Let's just jump right in. I'm gonna show you how to make it. All right, everyone, let's talk about cutting our fabric. So I have washed and ironed my fabric. And I'm gonna explain really quick how you're gonna make your cuts from your one yard piece. Do this out really quick for you. So our selvage to selvage, so we have up here, we have them lined up. That is our width of fabric, okay? So that's 42 inches, that's the measurement that I'm using, yours might be slightly different. We need two five inch pieces for our strap, and we need that for that entire width of fabric. Then from our remaining piece, we will cut the body of our apron, and then the pocket. So here's our selvage and our selvage, we've folded it up. That's how it looks up there. So we need two five inch pieces. Then we'll rotate and we'll get a 37 by whatever this is ending up for you. It's about 25, 26, just depending on how generous of a cut or how much shrinkage you had. Then our leftover piece will be our pocket. This pocket size might vary slightly depending on how much shrinkage you had, how much generous cut you have. Hopefully you've got a five or six by 12 inch piece that you'll have there. Let's cut our strap and our waistband. Whenever possible, use your ruler rather than your mat. So because this is smaller than six inches, we can use the five inch line on our ruler to make sure that we have a nice cut. So I'm lining it up here. One, two, three, four, five inches. There's one. All right, set aside your two strap pieces. We don't need those right now. Now from our remaining piece, we can open it up. I'm gonna fold it up so that our cut sides are lined up. Our selvages are lined up on the left side. From this remaining piece, we're gonna get our pocket and the body of our fabric. I want a 37 inch piece. So grab your tape measure. That's kind of the easiest way, unless you have a bigger mat. Okay, so there's my 37. And then that still gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, a little bit more than six inches for my pocket. So we're right on track. That's exactly what I want. These measurements are also very forgiving, I wanna mention. So if you've got 37, but you would wanna do 38 or 36, that's totally okay. It's not gonna matter for this. So here's our pocket piece, which we can also set aside for now. While we're here, let's go ahead and cut off this other selvage. Okay, so now we've got a piece that is hopefully about 37 inches wide by, you know, 25 to 26 inches long. And the reason why it's wider along the top is because we're gonna have that cute little gather. So it's gonna shrink up. The next step is to hem your sides and then your bottom. So let's head over to the ironing board. This is one of the sides of our apron and I'm just gonna eyeball it on this one. If you watched the napkin video, I got real specific with that seam gauge and I really wanted you to have a perfect uh, ironed hem and the reason for that is because we have when we have our napkin you know we're actively seeing both sides of it we want that to look really nice we want it to look perfect this is gonna be the back side of an apron no one's gonna come up and examine how your hem looks and so we can eyeball it it's, we're gonna get real close with the eyeball and we don't want to drive ourselves crazy fold over at about a quarter of an inch then I'm gonna fold over again and then this one is gonna be about three quarters of an inch. So here's the yellow. We're gonna sew it from the front side of our apron and make sure that it looks perfect from the front. And if the back has a couple little wobbles here and there, it's not gonna make any difference. If you need to pop a few pins in there, go ahead and do that. And then do the exact same quarter inch then three quarter inch on the other side of your apron. Then we'll take it to the sewing machine. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. Now remember what I said, we're gonna sew it from the front. Here's our back side, And we're not gonna use that fold or anything to use as our guide. We are going to flip it and sew it from the front. So that just means we need to pick a line to follow on the sewing machine so that when it's sewing it down, we're catching you know, the, the back fold. So we wanna pick a measurement, it's likely gonna be about a half inch because we want it to be close to the fold, but we don't wanna risk missing it. Um, and we don't want a giant flap. Go ahead and sew that down. You want a back stitch at the beginning and the end. So for this step, I really want you to practice using one of those lines on your sewing machine to follow along with as you sew down. We're not using the fold of a fabric, we're using the lines on that machine. So mine is gonna be half inch. 
Make sure you don't iron over any of those pins. Just take a look at the back and make sure everything is looking good. There's nothing crazy going on. Everything is nice and secure. And as long as that is the case, go ahead and do the other side. Okay, find the bottom of your apron. If you're using a directional print, this will matter. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. I like a little wider, chunkier hem on the bottom of aprons and, and items like this. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna fold it over about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, and then I'm gonna bump it up. This is just over an inch um, instead of three quarters of an inch. Pin that in place and then we're gonna go do the exact same thing at the sewing machine that we did on the sides. So again, we're gonna be sewing from the front. The fold will be on the back side as we run it through the machine. So this is a wider hem, which means we need a wider line. So that 5 8 line is going to probably be appropriate for this one, depending on how large you made your hem. Just a little tip, when I am looking at the machine, I'm not looking at my needle. I am looking at where my fabric is next to that line and I am watching that line and running it across that way. I'm not paying really any attention to my needle or my stitch. I've already verified, you know, that my stitch is looking good. It's attaching everything. And so that's how you want, you can keep it straight. Keep your eyes on that part to make sure that you're following the straight line. And when you get to this edge, there's likely a lot of layers, so you're going to need to maybe go slow, just depending on how powerful your machine is. Make sure you backstitch. All right, I'm going to go back through one more time and do a little top stitch. I think it just adds a little bit extra flatness um, and finish to that bottom seam, but that's totally optional. You don't have to do it. I'm going to pick a spot, and I'm actually just going to use the width of my presser foot and sew it like that. Now we're going to do our pocket because I find it's easier to attach the pocket before we do our gathering. Take your pocket piece and trim off your selvage and just get the, the maximum width that you can from your extra piece by 12 inches. Then bring that back over to the uh, work table. All right, here's our piece. Now this pocket's not gonna be huge. This is gonna be like a cell phone pocket or for a, a wooden spoon or two. So what we need to do is we're gonna flip this over we're gonna fold it up and line up our edges. And then what we're gonna do, so this will be your right side, okay? So we're gonna sew our right sides together and we're gonna do another, like a, where we sew it and then flip it right side out like our placemat. We're gonna sew down about 3 eighths of an inch. So following that 3 eighths line, down and over, and then down and over. We need to leave about a two inch opening here at the bottom for us to flip it the right side out. Add a couple little pins. And now remember, my fabric is not directional or with the right side, wrong side. This is your right side. We're always, you know, sewing with our right sides together. Starting at my line, following that 3 eighths inch line, backstitch. Do the other side. I'll start from the fold. We need to trim those corners. Kind of helps reduce the bulk. And then flip it right side out. Stick your finger in those corners and pop them out. So then here we go. We got our little pocket. Now we're going to iron it flat. And when we iron it, similarly to our placemat, we need to make sure that this is nice and straight across and it looks really neat and tidy. There's our pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that through the machine just to give it a nice, good little top stitch. And you will want this to be on that folded side. Okay, now let's determine where we want it to go. 
I'm right-handed, so I probably want it on my right side. And remember, this whole front of our apron is gonna shrink up, you know, a lot with that gathering. We don't want it like super close to the edge. That would look silly. So here's my right edge, right, as, it, as it's laying on you. So if I'm looking at it, it's the left edge because we've got the seam here. Our hem down here. From the edge, I'm gonna put mine in about seven inches from the side and about six inches from the bottom. Again, if you want to adjust that slightly based on the direction of your fabric or matching things up, by all means do that. And also if you wanna make a larger pocket, you have other fabric, a contrasting fabric, a, a different color, please get creative with this. This is just like a starting point. We're all set to go. I've got my needle position all the way to the right, my stitch length up to a three, and I'm gonna use my presser foot. I'm actually even gonna come in a little bit closer um, using this presser foot as a guide because I want that stitch as close to that fold as possible while catching the pocket and the background, keeping it nice and straight, especially my fabric. You can't really see the stitch at all, but if you're using a fabric where you can, you wanna make sure that it's nice and straight. We also want as much of that pocket as possible. This is a smaller pocket, so we don't wanna come in too far with our stitch. It's no need to. Also make sure you backstitch, even go back and forth a couple of times because that is where the pocket is gonna get some additional stress. I love that it's got that double layer, so it's nice and solid. It's not flimsy at all, and you know, it's perfect like, you know, cell phone size, but also of course plenty large if you wanted to put a couple of tools in there. All right, now it's time to move on to our gathering. Here is what we need to do for that. So along our top edge here, so our top edge, we've, it's raw still, we haven't done anything to it. We need to put three basting stitches. So we're gonna run that along here. It's okay if it takes up a little bit of space because we can pull those basting stitches out later. So what you're going to do is take this back over to the sewing machine. And the biggest thing we need to do is put our stitch length up to the highest that it will go. So that's a five for me. So then we're gonna run three of them going down. And the reason why we do three is because likely one of them will break. And so we need to just have one extra just in case one of them breaks. It kind of creates a little bit more of an even gather. The other thing is do not backstitch. Don't backstitch. This won't work if you backstitch, okay? So did you hear me? Don't backstitch. All right, so I am going to keep my needle position all the way in the right side. I'm gonna run this down the side. I'm gonna even go over the hem. Okay, when you get to the end, don't backstitch again, right? So no backstitching for this basting part. Lift it up and leave a nice long tail. Okay, you can already kind of see that it, it wrinkles it up a bit. When you do another stitch, make sure that you're not touching that line. And if you need to use a contrasting fat thread, we can pull these out later. So you totally can use like a crazy color so that you can see it really well. Um, but we need to do two more of those. Again, don't cross over it. And also make sure there's a bit of a tail. it will just help you later on. Okay, so I'll send another pass through. I'm just running the left, the right side of my presser foot with that stitch as I go down. Send it back through for our third pass. Here is the end. You can see that it's kind of already doing it. <laughs> but the way that we're gonna gather this up is, let's take a look at our threads down here. So we've got three of them. Now we need to just grab the top stitch or the bobbin stitch. It honestly doesn't matter which one, but grab like your seam ripper or something kind of pointy because we want to distinguish between our top thread and our bobbin thread. Okay, so just separate those out and pull the top threads up. And if you've got any other threads in the way, just trim those so you don't get confused. Okay, so I'm holding on to my top stitches here are our bobbin stitches, and we'll just pull. So keep a nice good grip, and you see what I mean? It was like, likely one will break, so I'm just holding on to those top stitches really tight, and slowly gathering together. We're going to gather from the right side and then we're going to also gather in from the left side and our total width needs to be 19 inches. So keep gathering until you reach 19 inches across 
and then kind of even everything out. You know, you don't want it to be super gathered on one side and thinner in the middle, let's say. So go ahead and gather up your apron. Right now we need to work on our strap or our tie. Here are our, it's our waistband and our tie are gonna be all in one. And so here are our two pieces. Now we need to cut our selvages off. One of them needs to stay as a full piece. The second one needs to be cut in half because we need both of these length in order to have enough length for our tie. If we just sew them end to end, you're gonna have a seam like right in the middle of your belly and it's not gonna look good. We wanna have two seams further out on the side of our strap so that we don't have a seam visible and like in a prominent spot, like right in the center of your apron. So cut your selvages off and one of them in half. Okay, we've got our one whole piece. We've got our two pieces. So your one whole piece right sides together with our shorter piece to create one long waistband slash tie and with this we can just have it be a quarter of an inch seam allowance so go ahead and make your long strap don't forget to put your stitch length back down to like a 2.5 and remember your right sides are together got our waistband tie and the body of our apron. So take your waistband tie and find the center point. Fold it in half. Here's that center point. You can open it up and then find the center point from the body of your apron also. So fold that in half, find that center point and mark it with a pin. So now you can match up those pins and Make sure that everything is lined up nicely. We're gonna line up those raw edges. So see those raw edges from the body and the tie, right sides together. Make sure it's right sides together and pin everything in place. Now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew it with the gathered side underneath. Make sure things are staying lined up. And we're gonna sew down just the body of the apron using a 3 8 inch seam allowance back stitch really well at the beginning and the end. So here's how it's looking once you do that first initial stitch. And take a look, we can see those basting stitches now. So pull those out with your seam ripper. Here's how it looks after you pull out those seams. And now it's time to do our tie. We're in the home stretch. So the top part of our tie and our waistband, we're gonna iron it over and then fold it over and sew it down. So that's kind of how it's going to work. And then we're going to sew it from the front, just like we've been doing with the other steps. So get your iron. We're going to iron over the top about a half inch all the way down. So the entire length of the tie. And then see down here where that gathering is? We are going to also press up. That one's a little bit smaller, about a quarter of an inch. When you get to those seams, press those seams open where you joined on that tie so that there's no bulk and get your tie prepped like this. So here's how it's looking. Now we're gonna fold over, see that fold? We're gonna pull that down and we're gonna go past that seam. So see the seam? We're gonna go past it, line it all up and pin it into place. Make sure you're going past that initial seam so that everything's nice and hidden and looks really good. Pin it really well going all the way down the body of your apron. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna line up those folds on the tie and pin or clip that going all the way down to the end. I love the clover clips for this, or you can use pins. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna fold over your end like this, give it a good press, and then clip that in place because we're gonna sew it just like that. So here's how it's looking. Now go back over to your sewing machine and we're gonna just sew along the body of the apron to get that nice and secure going down before we do the entire length of our tie. We're gonna go real close to that initial seam. So see here's the front and then take a look at the back and make sure that it's looking really good on the back side too. Now take the entire tie and we're gonna sew it going all the way down, starting one end, going all the way down, across the body of the apron and then all the way to the other side. So again, we're doing about an eighth, eighth inch seam allowance. So starting on that short end, going down, and then we're gonna sew for the entire length of our tie with that seam allowance. Just make sure that everything is looking good, make any adjustments that you need as you sew down. 
Now here's the main body. So that stitch is about maybe a sixteenth of an inch away from that first stitch. And then continue on the other side of your tie. Now when you get to the end, the feed dogs do a really good job of pulling that fabric through. And so the top part of your tie might be a little longer. You see mine's a little bit longer than the bottom side. That's okay. Just with your fingers, adjust that fold so that it lined up and then finish it up. Okay, we're down here at the short end. Make sure that you back stitch really well once you finish up. And look at that, you are all done. Trim any excess threads. Make sure it's looking good. Examine it now. Here's our little pocket. There's that adorable gather. And you have made your apron.